Now the last thing that I will just briefly touch on is the use of UI kits. So user interface kits, we saw the example earlier that contained all of the images for let's say an iPhone, but you can have ones that are formatted for Android phones or iPads or the playbook development. They are usually in the PSD format, so you do need to have a bit of a background in Photoshop or even just opening up and screen, take screen captures and then customizing them yourself using paint will actually work out pretty well. So you can see there, I've got this one application here, which is actually uh, roughly equivalent to the size of a, it's, well, this pixel size of a playbook. And then on the background here, this is actually just another UI uh, set that you can download, kind of looks like Tron and things kind of glow. Uh, you'll find that uh, development these days is actually just this, you'll see that the user interfaces are just a collection of images. Anyway, so I'll go back to this form that I have put together. Uh, you probably can't see the whole thing. Uh, so I will move it around so that you can. There, here we go. You'll have this file available for download for some of you. I have a, a basic form that I developed in um, in VBA. So here you go. I've got this program that I want to build. This is essentially what it's going to look like. Maybe I'll develop it in Visual C++. Maybe it'll be Visual Basic. But I've just put it together, this prototype in VBA. So I can look at pictures and you know that actually does something it didn't a second ago so I click on it, I click pictures and I get a picture loaded and you notice I just have buttons that don't do anything so I've added a little graphical button for that settings so that's nice but not very engaging it's gray you know I made it more interesting with this little button here but that's really not the point so we move on to the next step well I want a much more dynamic kind of application to look at so I can do something like this so here I've just got a simple form where the background is an image that came from a, a UI set that I downloaded for free off the web. You do have to check the licensing on these kind of things to make sure they're available for uh, non-commercial uh, or non-commercial use, whatever you're going to be using it for. So I've got a couple of things here. I can click on the button and you'll see that these are actually graphics and they're not actual buttons. But I did uh, make a couple of things happen here so I can select a file somewhere I can select a file and then when I come back to the screen it would do something different and then I've done this so I click and I could choose one of those that's actually another image so I'll, I'll show you the little technique that I use here here's settings I click on the settings button and it displays another list this entire menu is another graphic element so this is entirely all one graphic which means I can't actually ch click on the other items but it gives you a good idea for what the application would do so I do want to make this uh, video short, uh, which is, of course, not as short as I wanted it to be, but just a last little look here. This is, of course, what I had created. The background is an image in itself. And uh, what I actually have, even though that's a background picture, on top of it, I've placed a label. And since I can execute code associated with any of these labels, they're just transparent labels that fit over top. There you go. Backstyle equals transparent. Usually they're opaque and they look like that. And of course, I could change their color and make it look like that or like that. Oh, those are border colors, so it doesn't really matter. Um, back color. There. So you can see them but I actually want to make them transparent anyway. So those are that's how that works, and I double click on open, and here's the code to open the particular file. If I go back to my form, now this is a little special technique here. This, you can actually see the label, there's a label here, and this is layered on top of this picture, which is actually an image that I'll just move out of the way because it's sitting on top of another picture. So actually that's part of the background too, so even I can pick up this label and I will change its color because it does get hard to find. Whoops. Oh, because it's transparent. There we go. I just move it out of the way. Okay, so that button it's not a button, that's just the background picture. Again, go back into the form and I just place the label on top of it because it's like a hot spot. That's what the user will click on in web terminology. And then this image is just placed in the right position that I want it to appear when I'm done with it. I had to do some fine-tuning by changing the uh, positioning using the left and top position of that image because I will show you uh, also for this particular image it is uh, not visible when the program runs so I actually change visible it's visible is false so that when I execute this form you can't see it and when I click on it it becomes visible. I click on that little region and it becomes visible 
and you can see there's kind of a it actually moves to the right a little bit and that's why I had to hide that because if I make this transparent again then I run it Oops. then you can actually see the button move and I didn't like that idea so I did have to tweak it a little bit and that's all I wanted to say. So the file will be provided for you if you're taking CP212 and you'll know how to get access to that file. So thank you very much for your time and I hope you had a great semester.